something like that. <laughs> Puppet dog not like being Santa's helper. Ho ho ho! Ho ho! Merry Christmas! Best of the season, all that stuff. Just getting in the spirit of things for the end of the year. Um, we are, today's video is literally going to be a bit of a wrap up or a surmise summary of what I've gotten up to so far on the car that you haven't seen. All right. Just above the steering wheel, we had a uh, stone chip, not major, but um, I didn't want to keep driving the car with it there. It might have cracked. And to find another windscreen was not an impossible and, it, and costly. So got onto a guy called Gary. Gary came around quick smart and for a really good rate, top bloke, he fixed it for us. Hey, you put this on. So is that, you've got to clean the window obviously no. first, no? No. Okay. Put it on over top of the chip. Yep. Do you have to extract anything out of the chip or anything? Clean it? No. Oh, we clean a bit of the surface glass out. And if there's not a lot of glass, if there's not a glass missing, you um gotta drill it. But this one didn't have to be drilled. So it's pretty small. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And then it should last last forever. Yeah. That that area now will be stronger than the rest of the windscreen. Okay. So is that going to stay on there for a while? About 20 minutes. Okay. Oh, that, oh well. That's like you're doing that, you're sort of like vacuuming it. Right. Then you just do the bolt up, and as you do the bolt up, the resin just forces into the damage. You still see a little bit of a crack under there. Yeah, oh yeah, that'll, that, that, that'll be the last bit to go. Yeah. So that's just like gravity feeding itself in there, basically. Yeah. I just finished doing up an old Mustang. Okay. Well, yeah. She was um, she went to a flood. The newer Mustang or the old one? Okay. Okay. Yeah. For a um, oh, that lady it was her birthday, so I took it for a birthday drive. Yeah. You still got it, or? Yeah. Okay. And then I used it for a wedding on the afternoon. Cool. How long you had that? Uh, probably three years. So I've had it five years, three years to restore it. Okay. So we're getting this out to get that. Nice, a beautiful Brisbane sun. So we've backed the car out because Gary, the man, our windscreen guy, I've just met Gary, lovely guy, he's working on a Mustang, that's cool. Um, he said it uh, needs UV light to cure the resin. So he said get it outside as soon as you can and that'll help cure it, I guess. I don't know, so that's what we're doing. The windscreen sorted, I decided to pull the bumper bars off and uh, we tackled the dint in the back corner. Uh, there is another one in the door, I haven't done that yet. But um, the guy had reversed into a wall by the looks of it and popped the damage of the bumper bar and popped the rear quarter panel in the boot, I guess. That had been uh, pushed in. So I got to work on that pretty quick, it wasn't too hard. I'm not a panel beater, but it looks a damn sight better than it was. So they've got a bracket in the frame here on both sides. Looks like. Alright. Bit of a workout. There we go, that's as light as a feather. Moving the bumper revealed a bit of a crease in the rear and some missing paint. A bit extra work than I'd hoped for. The dent in the side is not that bad to be honest and it's quite flexible. So just using some force in my hand I was able to get most of that out. A little tougher around where the bumper bolts on, so I used a pry bar and some rudimentary panel beating tools. You can see most of that's gone, just a little tiny dimple where the bumper bolts on that will be hidden so I'm not overly worried. Using some PDR equipment, just tapped in those little bit of, you know, those high spots you get sometimes, uh, very delicately, tap tap, away we go and then uh, I'll just jump from outside the car to inside the boot, checking against the light and reflections to see I've got most of it out. All right, with the dent sorted on the car, it was time to turn my attention to the bumper bar. I was a bit worried about it because I thought, how am I going to get these dents out? I took it to a panel beater and he, he basically said, mate, I can't do any better than you can. So I attacked it myself. Uh, first off was repairing the brackets, getting them as straight as possible. It wasn't too hard. And uh, just check they're sort of close. Now, the dents in the bumper bar them itself were quite severe and 
If I had just belted it with a hammer, you would have seen a lot of like hit marks coming through the bumper bar. So, sort of, I thought it was a pretty smart idea. I grabbed the largest socket I had and made sure it fitted into the inner shape of the bumper bar, which it did. Attach it to a pry bar so I wouldn't smash my fingers, and then just proceeded to belt the hell out of it. Uh, checking regularly uh, on the other side of the bumper to see if the shape had come back. Tapping in those high spots again, sort of what I did with the quarter panel on the car. As you can see, not brilliant, but um, damn sight better than it was, and that'll polish out. The bum stops off, I decided to just attack it with some trim restorer, just to make sure that we could revitalize those black sections. How's that look? Yeah, look at that. Looks good. I've no idea. If in doubt, pull it out, eh? Careful with that one too. While well, I figure out what I've actually got to unbolt here, uh, let's have a look at what I had to do with the Weber Carby that's on this car and a little package we received in order to improve the Carby itself. This took forever to come from not far at all. It's like bloody Christmas every day when you're fixing cars, there's always something coming in the mail. This time we received a Ramflow air filter. Now that's going to replace the original kit because I was not happy with it. It was ugly and it wasn't operating correctly. That's for the PCV I guess. Go on, I'll do an adaption for that. And that's to screw onto the top of the carby. So let's, let's go and see if this fits. This is going to go onto there. Now that looks better. When I got the ram flow in the box, there was no gasket that goes between the Weber Carby and the air filter. You'd think it'd be pretty much stock standard and I rang them saying it didn't come with it and they said it doesn't come with it. You have to buy it separately. So $15 later, we've got this. So I'm just gonna take this off. I put grease there to try and form a, um, a seal. It was an idea. With the gasket in hand, I can now install the Ramflow air filter correctly. So let's put it in place, screw back on the base plate. I'm gonna use some grease around the PCV where it, uh, adaption goes into the base plate because I had to cut it a little bit. Reinstall the air filter, clip it down there and uh, wipe down any excess grease, anything that's looking ugly. And let's try and fire this old girl up. finally got it to start, um, what I did was, based on the research I've done on Weber Carbys, we've got our air fuel mixture screw down here, I thought it was the idle screw, um, but these run on a circuit or something, anyway, I screwed it all the way until it's seated closed and then wound it out two full turns, you're not allowed to have, shouldn't have any more than two full turns on that screw, and um, tried to start it and it wouldn't start. Uh, choke wouldn't start manual choke on this So I wound it out another full turn. So we're just over three turns. I'd say uh, On the mixture screw there the car finally booted up and started idling pretty rough it Actually probably needs to be wound out more so I can let in more fuel Because I've put this on and it, I mean it did have a the tube here before and and it used to funnel through that through the filter and into the carby, but we've seen and I've thrown it away now we saw that there was actually no filter in there, but at least it was drawing air from a long distance, so it wasn't probably getting as much as it is now. And it was already wound out, that screw. So it means they've, they've filled with it, rather than changing the jets. Um, the people that looked after this forever, the mechanics, who were paying a hundred and something dollars an hour for, didn't rejet it. They just kept winding out the um, mixture screw. So I'm gonna have to order some jets. I'll show you the difference between the settings. So I'll get the car running. It's, that's on three turns. So if I actually turn it to where it should be, you listen to the motor. It's only half a turn back. Barely idling, right? If I go to two, so another half turn. Okay. Doesn't like it. So I've got to go half and an 
another one, even another half quarter turn, so that's the actually idle problem. So that means I'm having to open up more fuel to compensate for the air, which means the jets now need to be larger so I don't have to wind it out that much. Because that, that messes with the fuel circuit, I think. It's a new science to me too, I haven't done this since I was a teenager. So the screw we're looking at is right there. I love it when I get a delivery. Very small deliveries at that, but I still love it. Uh, these are your primary idle jet and your secondary idle jet. I think the, the primary one here is the one that's a little more used. Now these have some numbers written on them. Okay, I ordered two because I want to go, it was 45 and 50, right? But the 45 is basically useless. So what I'm going to do, because they're identical, except for their ventry size, like... Anyway, so I'm going to take the 50 that was in the secondary and put that in the primary, and then I'm going to put the 55, which is this one here, into the secondary. And we're going to run it and see what that's like. And if they're not correct, we'll then shuffle it again. And then the 55 and 60 will go in. It's this tiny little number written just below that. Now the jets are seated in these little screws and you just clip them in like this. You can feel them click in as you push. So that's the primary one done and now we're going to install the new secondary jet. Clicking it in again. You've got to feel it click. There we go. Let's put them back in the carby. Primary is on the right side here. That's the first one we're doing. And then we're going to do the secondary. And then I'm just going to nip them both up just enough so I can try running the car again. All right, let's give it a shot. Power. Pumps. As you heard, they took a bit of effort to get fired up. I still think we're undersized on our jets. It's a fuel delivery problem. That's why it's struggling to start. Let's drop the choke out. Let's turn it down. All right, choke is off. So that's basically now on two and a half, nearly three turns out, and it's still just idling, which still tells me that the jets aren't big enough. It's better. Shouldn't be doing that. So if I open up this air, air fuel mixture through a little bit more, if I can bloody get onto it. Shaking like. All right. So let's wind that out a tad more. You hear that change? The carby was still struggling for fuel, so we're going to do a swap out again. Now, the primary one I'm taking off, that's going to be taken away completely. And the secondary will now become the primary and we'll whack in the brand new 60.60 uh, secondary. When there's not enough fuel going in, the car will not be combusting. It's got too much air and there's not enough fuel. It's not wet enough to explode. But what people mistake this for is flooding. So it gives off the same symptoms as flooding and it's not. We actually need more fuel because the car is starving and not combusting. Let's go in just, so not hard, just so it seats down, right? right so it's just coming in to buy there. Right, so straight up and down. So we want two full turns. Half, one, half, Two. Let's try it again. Oh yeah. That is better. Now, someone should have done that as a mechanic years ago, and they didn't. Look at that, idling beautifully. Jets, that's all you needed. And that is perfectly done right on the air fuel mixture. That is idling the best I've had at idle, and... Horsepower, baby! Tell 
So, it'll be interesting to see what it's like on the road now. But unfortunately I can't do that yet until I uh, get the rego sorted and the wheels back on.